Thank you, Congressman McEachin, Chairman Grijalva, for having um, myself and the Hip Hop Caucus here today. If you listen closely, you can hear the ancestors of African slaves reaching out and telling us to keep moving forward, not to give up, that a better time will actually happen. From the times of slaves on our country's shores, on the plantations, brought there not just for their labor, but also for their expertise in agriculture, America has been built upon those backs, those tears, those bloods. And as we've moved forward, we have individuals that we can reference by name who have done incredible work to help to make change happen inside of our country. George Washington Carver, who helped folks to have a better understanding not just how to utilize peanuts, but also to understand our soils and why it was so important to protect them. You have Matthew Henson, who often is not given the credit in the conservation space for actually helping to lead Perry to the North Pole and to make sure that we understand that he was there first and had to deal with many of the challenges in making direction to that space. But then we can come to a time that is much closer. In 1968, when Dr. King was there marching with the sanitation workers and making the connection between the impacts of jobs and our environment and our public health and beginning to build the bedrock that would be necessary for us to have a movement that we call the environmental justice movement. You see, the environmental justice movement came into this space because there was not a seat at the table for them and many of our existing green groups at that time who were focusing on many important things like icebergs and ice shelves and polar bears and things that, yes, we should be focused on, but we also needed to be as equally focused on the impacts that were happening from pollution and how do we better make sure that voices from vulnerable communities have an opportunity to frame out the direction that we would go in relationship to environmental and climate and conservation. So we have names of individuals that many sometimes don't know. Hazel Johnson, the mother of the environmental justice movement from the south side of Chicago, who coined the term a toxic donut because in her community there in Altgeld Gardens, they were surrounded by 17 polluting facilities. And because of that work that she was able to move forward on addressing the cancer clusters, those having asthma and other bronchial related diseases, a young man by the name of Barack Obama began his work in community service because of the recommendation of Ms. Hazel Johnson. So we should always remember the power that exists in that space. And then we should call out the name of Dana Alston. Dana Alston helped to pull together the first People of Color Summit in 1991 that brought hundreds and hundreds of individuals from across our country together and they began to coalesce and say that they had some similar types of impacts that were happening inside of their communities. And out of that first People of Color Summit came the 17 principles of environmental justice. The first one being honoring Mother Earth. Imagine how different our policies would be. Imagine how different how we would direct resources if we truly believed that and that was a part of the foundation that we stand on but also out of the environmental justice movement came individuals like Dr. Benjamin Chavis, who coined the term environmental racism because of the things that they were seeing in the South and across our country where many communities of color were being disproportionately impacted and their health being put in jeopardy. And of course, Dr. Robert Bullard, who founded the Deep South, uh, Deep South Center along with Dr. Beverly Wright and then at Clark Atlanta University, uh, Dr. Bullard founded uh, the scientific work that needed to happen in the environmental justice space. But we won't stop there because we also have to call out the name of Bunyan Bryant, who led the Michigan Working Group. And out of that working group came the recommendations to the Environmental Protection Agency and William Riley at that time to say that we needed to have an Office of Environmental Equity, which became the Office of Environmental Justice at the Environmental Protection Agency. And out of that has come an incredible set of work Everything from the environmental justice small grants, which have provided over $25 million in resources to communities to be able to make change, to the National Environmental Justice Advisory Council, to Executive Order 12898 that President Clinton signed in 1994. And we have to call it the name of Dr. Clarice Gaylord, who was the first director of the Office of Environmental Justice, and Miss Vivian Malone-Jones, who many will remember because of her civil rights work 
uh, in integrating college, but also because she was the first director, regional director of environmental justice in Atlanta. And of course, Harold Mitchell, who has been able to take a $20,000 environmental justice small grant and leverage into over $300 million in changes. And we can't forget our young brothers and sisters like Little Miss Flint and others who are continuing to move forward. Also the Sunrise Movement and This Is Zero Hour. African Americans have made significant contributions and will continue to. Thank you. <laughs>